Hi folks, I'm Aslin Blow from AZ Entertainment. We're back again. It's Sunday evening. Sunday evening here in the UK. AM, wherever you may be. Um, we've got Joy Stewart cooking with us, um, cooking for us um, today, and she is promising us a delicious chicken and chocolate dish. But more about that in a bit. Let's go say hello to our international panelists as usual. We're just going to pop on over to gorgeous Brittany in cold Indianapolis, I hear. Yes, it's very cold here. Today's actually a warm day. We got 25 degrees as the high, so Fahrenheit. So I will take that. <laughs> Fahrenheit, yeah, 25 degrees is warm. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> right, we're going to go over to Japan now. And to say hello to Candy, loving, loving your new um, overly Candy. Hi, good morning from a very cold, crazy weather here in Tokyo right now. What? We're having the cold weather and the spring weather at the same time. What is what is it in Tokyo? Because of course you guys you guys um, get cold weather too. What is it like there? It is right now minus 2 degrees. Oh, Celsius, right? We're talking Celsius, aren't yes, we? Yes, we're Celsius. Yeah, we're talking about Celsius. Yeah, Celsius. I'm freezing. I'm freezing. Uh, you're freezing. <laughs> Put on a coat. Put on a coat. <laughs> I am in one, and uh, my heater. I actually I have a heater on my back, so I can keep warm. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> right here, good to have you, Candy. Good to have you. We don't talk too often these days, right? We've also yeah. got Namal um, in um, Sri Lanka, but um, I, I think he might just be having trouble with his connection. So we'll just head on over to Joy. Tell us. Who you are, where you are, and what you're cooking today. All right, I'm coming to you from uh, sunny California. I know Brittany is probably not going to want to hear this, but it's uh, about 75 today. Uh, really lovely weather. <laughs> Sorry about that, Brittany. Uh, <laughs> sending some warm thoughts to you, though. I'm um, coming to you from uh, Silicon Valley area, South Bay. And today I am going to be making for you chicken mole enchiladas uh, with a special kind of sauce that actually as its main ingredient has chocolate. Hmm. Ooh, looking forward to that because I, I mentioned in the event stream years ago and I can't remember. I remember making, uh, I made chicken one. It was horrible. One of those very rare times I have a disaster in the kitchen, uh -huh. if I may say so myself. There you go. Back to Joy. Enough about me as usual. Back to Joy. <laughs> so um, there's a few stages. Um, one of the big things to talk about is ingredients and what could possibly be used as substitutions just in case you don't have a Mexican market on your street or in your neighborhood. Um, one thing that might uh, well be essential is the tomatillo. Um, I don't know if those are available in Europe, uh, but you really only need about uh, four of them to make the sauce, so you really don't need a lot. Um, so if don't fret if you find some and only a few of them are good quality. Another thing that you will need is uh, adobo. Now, I actually have chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. In fact, it's spicy enough to make my eyes water just from the smell. Mm. Um, but that's what I've been using. Um, habaneros are the hot peppers. Those are roast, pre-roasted already. In fact, habaneros what... are not hot, Joy. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, my Carolina Reapers. <laughs> 500,000 on the Scoville scale. Um, which is pretty good. Amen to that, Joy. <laughs> Amen for habaneros. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, the thing is, so it's kind of a gentle sauce. You really don't want it to be too spicy. Um, there's the what, what the tomatillos look like all roasted up. So what you do is you actually have to cook it in phases. Um, you cook some of your aromatics, uh, cool those down, blend them, and then um, return all the blended stuff, uh, strain it, and uh, return it to the pan. And then, finally, the chocolate. After that, it's ready to serve. So um, just going to start us off with uh, toasting the aromatics. Um, what I have is uh, four uh, tablespoons of peanuts. I have, um, and we're going to put this on a pretty low setting because it's not a very large pan and I don't want to burn my aromatics. So I'm going to cover the bottom of the pan with uh, my chosen fat, which is coconut oil. I chose it because it doesn't have a lot of flavor profile. You can use uh, lard if you prefer. I just don't know that I can trust the quality of the lard you get in the States because um, the animals tend to carry a lot of like pollutants through their fat and I just don't know where that lard is coming from. 
So I have uh, two tablespoons of sesame seeds, four tablespoons blanched almonds, um, also my spices, which are uh, the bulbs of spice cloves, um, a half, uh, sorry, a stick of cinnamon, and an uh, um, entire pod of um, star anise. So those are going to go in the pan together. Um, and I also want to caramelize my onions at the same time. I'm going to use the same fat throughout, just so that the chocolate really has a chance to shine. Uh, uh, so do, you know, do you know what? If I can just interrupt, um, we had some technical issues um, um, in the green room, didn't we? Didn't we? So <laughs> what we didn't do just now is, um, if I can get your sous chef to move that camera down ever so slightly, because we can't see. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Come on, sous chef, get going. Uh, <laughs> Honey, chop, chop. Can you move oh, the camera? Oh, I love, I love, I love when she says honey. <laughs> oh, honey, can you move the camera down slightly, please? Oh, I love, I love when right. Joy says that. She's so sweet. <laughs> the lid. Yeah, the camera. There you go. All right. <laughs> yeah, she's getting stronger. Oh, great. A little bit more, Josh, please. A little bit more, and I think to to the uh, left, uh, facing me a little bit. There we go. Can we see the pans now? We sure can. Yes. Definitely. All right. Fantastic. Maybe uh, next time I should put it up a little higher or something. Anyway, uh, thank you. I think we hopefully got it worked out. He's such a sweetheart, Joe. <laughs> yeah, and thankfully he knows a lot about technology, so I'm in good hands. Good, good for us, man. <laughs> so um, at this point... We just want to wait for uh, certain of the ingredients to be ready to um, put aside and cool down. Um, in the meantime, uh, I what's have that, some. What's that, what's that space age looking thing on your on your um, right there? Is that your mic? Yes, it is. Cool. <laughs> I love it. It's it's pretty neat. And if you look um, closely, it's actually got like the head of a really old-fashioned microphone. So. Cool. Um, nice. Nice. Very nice. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on over to Brittany um, and um, say hello. Hi, Brittany. Have you have you made chicken money before? I have not. That's why I was really excited about this. I actually have never made mole, so I did a lot of research leading up to this show to see different ingredients. So I'm really excited to see this. Cool. Cool. And have you got a Japanese version of it? Because they because because we had we had. The Japanese rice tacos, didn't we? Do you remember? Yes, we, we had you on Savor the Flavor showing us that um, at the restaurant. So do you have anything similar to this? Candy? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, for, I thought it was joy. Oh, for, oh my goodness. Well, actually, for the chicken, I had on my YouTube video a chicken ham, actually, I made a year ago. Yes. It's a ham not made in pork, but made of chicken breast, and it's so easy to use. I mean, it's 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 very easy and reasonable too, and that's why. And right now, I'm going to make a chicken, a sushi chicken out of spam. Okay, listen, you go on, you go on, you go on talking if you want. I'm just gonna go and head on over to um Joy while you're telling us about your chicken spam, just to see if we're missing anything. Are we missing anything, Joy? Um, well, I did want to show you guys the finished uh, mole sauce because I made up some really mm. lovely mole sauce last night. Um, if you strain it through, it has this really beautiful consistency. And see what a deep chocolate color that has? There's lots of chocolate in there. Uh, that's a lot of chocolate, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we're not, we're not talking just a touch here, are we? That's right, yeah. So tell us, tell, tell us, is it a, a Mexican dish or is it Tex-Mex, like chili con carne? It is actually a Mexican dish. Um, in some uh, cases, on some very authentic menus, you'll actually see it as uh, mole and, and Puebla, which is um, actually a town in Mexico where it's supposed to have come from. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm just going to I'm just gonna say a quick hello to lots of people in the audience. We've got Bruno Miguel Santos who says, uh, who needs um, habaneros or hot chilies if you've got a hot Latino, i.e. himself, of course. <laughs> Um, hi, and we're saying hello to Michael Thomas, June Davil, Perry Avari from San Francisco. Is it warm there? Is it a nice hot sunny day today? And we've got, um, wait a minute, oh yes, Jim Best. 
Howdy folks, no camera, I'm at work and technically shouldn't be here, so okay, back to Joy <laughs> on that now. Uh, well, um, Perry probably has the short end of the stick in terms of weather because San Francisco is always at least 10 degrees colder than uh, the surrounding areas. Ah, but, uh, okay. Still, she's warmer than Brittany. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean, even I am warmer than Brittany today. <laughs> well, actually, I can't win. I just can't win. So is your, is your, oh, I'm just actually just going to go say hello to Namal. Um, hi, Namal. We didn't get to say hello to you just now. Hello. Can good. you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Good, good to have you. Good to have you back again. And uh, we will have at the end of some time during the show. Oh, I can feel myself speaking. That's a scary thought. Uh, experience. Uh, sometime during the show or at the end, we're going to have a surprise from Namal. Now we're going to go back to Joy. Mm -hmm. Actually, perfect timing because my aromatics are uh, just about toasted, at least the um, nuts. You really don't want to leave them on for too long because if you get burnt nuts, then they're acrid and, well, no fun. So, so you, we're going to... got peanuts and sesame seeds in there. Yeah, I've got peanuts, sesame seeds. Um, it's kind of actually a pretty nutty sauce. Like, those are the two dominant flavors. Three. Well, there are three dominant flavors. The adobo is really smoky, so mm. the three dominant flavors are smoky, that beautiful rich chocolate that's actually supposed to be as much bitter as it is slightly sweet, and then um, the very nice, smooth, rich nuts. I have a question about the adobo, adobo can. Is that yes. a pork version or a chicken version? It's actually neither. It's just um, adobo paste with a little bit of. Uh, oh, it's a adobo paste. paste. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Right. So, um, adobo is pretty important, by the way. Uh, it really lends that extra flavor to the sauce. Um, it doesn't have to be like in the can with chipotle preserved in it, but I would say um, order it from the internet if you can't find it. Some yeah, kind of adobo I, paste. I mean, at these days, you know, if in doubt, just go online search for stuff well I'm a Filipino in blood so I can I can blend my own adobo paste actually all right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, Brittany do you do much Mexican cooking um I started to get a little bit into it but not as much um, my boyfriend really likes it so he likes spicier foods way more than I do I'm kind of a whip slowly getting better. Um, so diving into it a little bit more now. Cool. Okay. Cool. Right. Where, where are we at? Um, so we still have to um, caramelize our onions um, probably another six minutes before they're ready to come off the heat and then we start combining things in the um, blender. Okay. So that will be a mute kind of a situation. <laughs> <laughs> we know about that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Right. So um, let's 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 talk. About, let's go to Candy for a minute. She's got. She's very excited about this chicken spam. Yes, I am so excited because. You know, everybody in the world, I mean, the whole wide world know or about the ordinary Spam, just like this, which has a different types of flavor, the original, the or garlic, and the hot spices. But I found out yesterday this chicken-based luncheon meat or a Spam. So I'm wondering if this will fit by a sushi because why for the Okinawans or on the what was south side of Japan they usually use spam as their uh, as their way of cooking and it's an ingredient already I mean for those beef or meat so I'm intrigued with the taste if we blend I blend it with sushi and that's the my, my goal for right, right now is to make a sushi out of a chicken spam. <laughs> Interesting. Well, we're looking we're looking forward to 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 that uh, concoction. Don't forget uh, we'll, to post it. In fact, uh, we'll. in fact, maybe we'll have you on the show doing it. Oh, sure. Why not? I mean, it's it's easy to do and it's ready. So if I have the chance, I can I can cook. I think it's only 20 minutes and it's done. Cool. Right. Be careful. Be careful what you promise me, because you know you promised me something. I always collect and then some. 
<laughs> you know that. You know that. <laughs> anyway, right. What have you got there? Or a, or a blender? Okay. So um, I just put the aromatics, just the nuts and the spices in the blender. Um, the onions are still caramelizing, so in the meantime, I'm just going to continue putting the other stuff in the blender. Um, actually, what I usually do is blend the nuts up a little bit on their own, just to make like a, a paste. Um, I feel like otherwise the wet stuff from the other stuff interrupts the texture of it. Um, so I think I might have to mute it for a second to blend that up. All right, T. I'll mute you. Thank you. Cooking <laughs> show. The noises. Of the Everybody, kitchen. please do understand. <laughs> Cooking show. Right. We did. We did mute you. I lied. <laughs> This is a cooking show, everybody. Please Wait, do understand. You what you drinking, Brittany? I am drinking Moscato. Again? Moscato. It's just a local. I have a big bottle. Oh, that's big. <sighs> that's just a local Indiana wine. Right. Let's let's go on over. So you blend it. That's so. Uh, that, that's the sauce. Sauce yeah. ingredients. Mm. Yes, um, so those are the first of the sauce ingredients, uh, just the nuts, and then um, what we're going to do is get the other uh, parts in here. Um, the tomatillos, and of course I forgot something, which would be the um, chicken stock. <laughs> mm. So um, it's, it's quite interesting because the, um, the, the, the flavors, the ingredients, I mean, well, it is a Mexican dish. It is, right. They are very... Um, Mexican, everything that's going in there. Yes. Yeah, it's really very, um, it's very cultural, this dish, I would say. Mm. There's a lot of, uh, you know, the kind of things that you would expect to find on a, a menu from a Mexican place, which is I really neat. Mexican foods, actually, Joy. Right, we've <laughs> got, um, just, uh, just saying hello to um, Ellie Phillips. Hi, Ellie. And Hope you're good. Alice, Alice, been playing, playing with snow all the time. It's so snowy. I'm jealous of all these people who get snow. I just get rain. You can have the snow. I will give it to you. <laughs> well said, Brittany. Well said. I will take snow, cold snow, cold day, dry, any day over wet. No, we had 20 degree wind chills to make it like negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. You can take that. That goes. <laughs> Brittany, we're having the same problems. Okay, girl. <laughs> I am a warm weather person. I was not meant to live in Indiana. That is for sure. <laughs> exactly. Oh, right. I agree that. Yeah, I think it's. Lightweight, can't take minus 20 degrees. What's this world coming to? Lightweight? I'm the tropical world. I should be moaning. Joy, I, I, I have a question for you, Joy. Yes. Can you start? A while, yeah, a while ago, she used, she used a coconut oil, right? Mm -hmm. A coconut oil sometimes has this strong smell and flavor. Aside from that, can you have another substitute about oils? For example, grape seeds oil which has less smell and flavor, or the typical corn oil, or what do you prefer as a substitute when you love to have the small flavor or a little less flavor or a taste of that? Well, that's actually a good question. Um, I don't uh, know if there are different types of um, coconut oil, but the stuff that you get here in the market is actually a very neutral oil. So whatever uh, neutral oil you want to substitute, lard is also a great substitution. Um, that's oh, actually big yeah. in Mexican food. So oh, now I know lard because a lot of people may have this. I mean, when they're going to supermarket, they just brought, bring along with them lards most often. Yeah. Why? And it's more cheaper, and it's for free anyway. Right, Joy. Yeah. 
tell me what what we what we rating um uh, what's happening and what are we rating for? If we, so, if we if you want to have a musical interview, just let me know. <laughs> we're waiting for very little. Um, we're just waiting for the onions to cool down a little bit more. Um, but I want to show you guys what it looks like when you make a whole tray full of enchiladas. Okay. And um, once the onions cool down a little bit more, I just don't want to damage my blender. Um, I've actually damaged the littler uh, containers by putting really hot food in there. So here's mm. my tray of enchiladas. Now, um, actually, this is a really super opportunity for me to show you what uh, the enchiladas are, how, how to put them together as well. So um, you want to put, if you're having trouble fitting them in the pan, if they are starting to come unrolled, put several of them together at once. Mm. Uh, so lay them flat and then put the ingredients in before rolling them up and then squishing them together. Uh, mm. It's one thing that I found. So here's my nice corn tortilla. Of course, it's been out of the fridge for a little bit, so it's curling at the edges. Um, very useful. And uh, what I have here is roasted chicken, which was marinated in adobo and coconut oil. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's actually really tasty on its own, um, but it's fantastic with the sauce. Now, what I used was um, mozzarella cheese, but you can use any soft white cheese. This is actually uh, really common in Mexican-American cooking, mozzarella cheese. Um, it's at all the Mexican markets. It's really the rage. Pe pe pepper going up your nose. Pepper going up your nose, yeah? Oh, yes, I'm a little stuffed, sorry. Um, it's probably because springtime is coming here and the pollen is coming back full force. That was so, me. Um, <laughs> scooch your ingredients toward one edge and then roll it up. Um, if you're, anything falls out, like a piece of cheese, stuff that back in and then uh, lay it in the pan. Or pop it in your mouth, if anything. Or pop it in your mouth. There you go. Although I have some extras here, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, right. I'm just. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna bring up um, a few comments here. We've yeah. got. Um, oh, Leroy Young was somewhere. There we go. Okay. Um, enjoying the show as always. Keep up the pan uh, good work and hi to the panel. So hi from Leroy Young, everybody. And we have got Chef Benjamin Fisher. Singing, I think. Hey, chef. <laughs> and we've got um, somebody, somebody. Here we are. My weakness is Michael Thomas. I'm a trade chef and I love Spam. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> He's so popular in Hawaii too, I think. Isn't it? It, it is. Huh? It's popular in Hawaii too, I think. Yeah. It is yeah. how very popular in Hawaii too, especially I rice and spam dishes. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Brittany, the culinary instructor. So, are we partial to spam or not? I I actually just posted on here. I'm not sure if I should be embarrassed or not that I have never had spam before. Spam in like my neck of the woods is not something that a lot of people eat. Or if they do, they give you a hard time about. Uh, okay. So I've never had it. And now I feel like I should quit. No, 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 no. You, you're not missing anything. Am I being a big influence for the others? Come on. <laughs> I, I, I feel that I've never had spam, but for the simple reason that I don't eat pork. So. Of course, now Candy has. Hold up the can, Candy. Candy has interviewed no us. Chicken spam. <laughs> the ordinary one and the chicken spam. Golly. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Lunch and meat. It's the yes. beginning of the end. And this will be a sushi. My own style. You know, I find that fa uh, fans of spam will always say uh, to fans, uh, non fans of spam, you really are missing out. You know, they're very yes. passionate about us. Well yeah. said, George. Well said. Well said. Amen for that joy. Amen. <laughs> Candy, so no, Candy, Candy, what time is it, Candy? I think Candy's running, running on, on something anyway. Four thirty early morning. Right. Um, so you're straining, straining the sauce, Joy. That's right. Sorry. Yes. Um. So now we're ready for the uh, exciting part, which is to reintroduce the chocolate. Now, at this point, if you don't feel like it's cinnamony enough. Taste it, adjust it for salt. If you don't feel like it's cinnamony enough, um, simmer it for a little bit with the cinnamon mm. so that you can um, just get a little more flavor. Otherwise, it's really ready to just thin it out to the consistency you want and add your chocolate. Okay. 
Okay. Now, I have a question. Okay, really. Brittany, yep. I've seen with mole's where they are cooked for hours on end, and then I've seen other ones where they're cooked like anywhere from 10 to 45 minutes. Is there a better option? The longer it goes, the better it is. Which would you recommend? I mean, usually I'd say the longer it goes, but are you losing anything if it's quicker? I, I don't think that you are. I mean, the exception might be some of the uh, aromatics, like the spices, um, you might not get in as well. Um, a lot of the, 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 here's the thing about mole, there are a ton of versions of this recipe. So some of them require five pans where you're um, cooking off like five different things at once. Uh, those sound like very sweet versions of the recipe. And uh, the versions I've always had have been bittersweet, you know, more yeah. like a really good um, high content chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there, um, I know sesame seeds um, go in there, is there an option to come across recipes without the sesame seeds? Come across recipes with what option? I'm sorry. In the paste, you know. I think, oh, uh, that's, what, I think that's what the problem is. While yeah. we have sesame seeds scattered on our salad at home almost daily, we um, I think I don't like the taste, the flavor of ground sesame seeds. Hmm. So um, gonna turn the heat on. We're just gonna bring it um, to a very lazy boil. I'm gonna um, adjust it to the consistency that I'd like it to be, and then um, actually this one turned out kind of thin. That's good. Um, can turn out really really thick. They recommend putting plantains in. Um, we didn't do that this time. Again, very sweet. And also raisins and prunes. I don't really cook with prunes. Does anybody cook with prunes? Anybody? Yeah. Not no. usually. Because I, I, prunes I has I a distinct case of got, got raisins. A, got, a, got a question for you, Joy. No cumin in the recipe? Because that's quite a staple in Mexican cooking, isn't it? It's true. Um, cumin is a really big, um, very popular spice in Mexican cooking, uh, and pretty much every other sauce you're going to make for your Mexican food is going to have cumin in it, but if you smell cumin, it's a little sweaty, mm. and sweaty and chocolate don't really go together so well. Fabulous. That's, that's really great. Great, great, <laughs> great, great actually. We've got a huge um, debate going on in the audience. Um, well, not so much debate, but lots of spam lovers. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> You've opened a can of worms, Candy. <laughs> thank spam, you. Spam was a staple growing up in the mountains of southern West Virginia. Thank I, you. I love you guys. I love mm. you guys. Dude, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> we fried in SVG Bologna and along with fried. Uh, was that is that supposed to be potatoes, tetas, and pinto beans? It was oh my god! It's like a different language, isn't it? It, it, it <laughs> is a different language. It is a different language. <laughs> what I've done? Right, and Chef Benjamin, do you like spam? No, well I don't know. I've never eaten it, so you know there you go. Right, you know. back to joy. Um, here I have my tray of already made enchiladas. Um, you can do, um, at this point, you could actually pour a green sauce before you uh, heat, reheat them, um, or you could pour a red sauce, and that would be a different dish, like um, uh, enchiladas verde, uh, green. But um, for us, we just uh, reheated the tortillas with the um, chicken and the cheese inside so that we could pour our lovely sauce all over it. Ooh. Don't sink with the sauce. That sauce is awesome. I've got the recipe made. I'm, I've, I'm just while while you are while you are um, doing that, Joy. Um, Namal mm -hmm. wants to know that sometimes he sees chicken dipped in chocolate mix Ooh, and okay. kept in the refrigerator. Quite interesting. interesting. Huh. Where uh, where is that? Sri uh, Lanka. Well, he's in Sri Lanka, oh. right? Namal, um, is that something they do in Sri Lanka? All right. So. I, I saw that in the uh, YouTube that uh, when, when you call the, uh, this dish, I examined some uh, recipes. Okay. Uh, I saw one um, recipe that they are doing that thing, that then they uh, keep in the fridge and after that they fried 
Friday. Okay, so so that's that. He's, he's he's been looking up um, only chicken um, recipes, and he's seen that in some recipes. That's interesting. Mm. Uh, there is a ton of variation between the recipes. This is how I achieved the um, right flavor profile. Mm. So when you after you ladle the sauce on, you want to garnish it with a couple of things. This is crema. Um, I couldn't actually find cream on the store, so what I did was thinned a little sour cream with uh, cream, and uh-oh, <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. Um, when I finally get that out, it just it's kind of a looser sour cream. And you, you've, you've obviously been, been, been having some of that stuff for dinner or something. That's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've been using plain old sour cream on it, but it really doesn't make for an appealing picture, so I'm hoping the crema is going to get over its technical difficulties right now. So um, this back to the sauce, which is simmering now. This is the point where I'd want to take it off the heat. If I feel like it's not thick enough, then I'd add thickeners. If I feel like it's too thin, I would add a little bit of um, chicken stock and let that come to a boil. Mm. Um, so once it's done bubbling, I'm going to add the chocolate, just kind of stir it in. Mm -hmm. Another is thing you want to garnish it with... Oh, sorry. Yeah, is the chocolate sauce bitter one or a sweet one? I'm just curious. It's somewhere in between. That's a really good question. It's um, It depends on whether you're talking about first taste or aftertaste because it tastes oh, okay. sweet on the on the aftertaste, you know, like the, the, the palate afterward. 70% um, chocolate? Yeah, that's what we're using. And also a little bit of Mexican chocolate. Now, that has oh. a lot of these spices in it already. Mm. Um, not only does it have a lot of the spices in it already, but it also, um, I don't know if you can see the consistency of this. Can you see those white granules wow. inside? Yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. um, some kind of cane sugar. They work with, uh, cook with mm. cane sugar pellets for the sweeter dishes. So they've That's actually sweet. inserted already the cane okay. sugar pellets in there. Cool. That's um, for, for those of you who like the recipe, Joy actually posted it in the event stream. But is it also on your website, on your blog, Joy? You know, actually, it's going up today. It hasn't gone up yet. I've been working on this a little more, so. It will be on there tomorrow. And oh, look, still on the subject of. Hey. For those spam virgins, here's the ditz. Hey. I take exception to that term. Yeah, I, th I, I think I have to cook with this, with this spam. <laughs> I have. I think I have to cook with this spam live. <laughs> right, Candy, Candy. Why don't you read out read out what Ellie Phillips said? For those spam virgins. Okay, I'm not a virgin anymore. Anyway. <laughs> Too much information. No, Here's the dip. Here's the dits on the uh, it on it from Wiki. Oh, thank you, Wikipedia. According to its lab, the Spam's basic ingredients are pork shoulder meat. We know that already. With ham meat, added salt water, modified potato starch as a bender sugar, sodium nitrate as a preservative. We know, but this one is chicken. How 100%? Um, oh, joy, as in a noun. That's given me a headache already. <laughs> so it's, it's not beautiful, but it will be absolutely delicious. The last thing is, of course, some minced cilantro, not just for color, but because that lovely little, uh, yeah. very herbaceous pop is perfect. So you've sauce. got, so you, so you've got um, the sauce, and that's cheese, grated cheese. Wow, uh, it's awesome. crumbled. Um, it's Cotija cheese, the firm uh, Mexican cheese that you can get in the markets. You can substitute that with any firm white cheese that has a high salt content. Okay, oh, cheddar, okay. Cheddar, would, cheddar would be um. I think I will try that with blue cheese. Ooh, there you go. That's a good one. And then sprinkle that with pistachio. Yeah. Or almonds or something like that. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so here's our sauce all ready for the uh, chocolate. And we'll just kind of unceremoniously dump it in. Thank you. Giving of your chocolatey goodness. There we go. Okay. Um... <laughs> So everybody and everybody loves melt. chocolate. Take it off, take it off the heat and melt chocolate. Now talk us through what went into very quickly what went into that sauce, Joy. We had four ounces of uh, seventy percent, up to seventy percent um, bittersweet chocolate that was chopped, and we also had a half a three ounce disc. So about uh, no, you can use the whole disc for this amount of sauce actually. So a three ounce disc of uh, Mexican chocolate chopped as well. And okay. that one actually incorporates a little easier because of the sugar. Okay. I think it's 
September or something. Uh, uh, we've got a question here from Perry Avari in San Francisco. Um, is it okay to make and freeze the sauce in smaller batches? That's a really good question. I haven't tried it. I would say um, experiment. Um, mm. if, if, when you reheat it because there's chocolate in, you want to reheat it in zaps, you know, or over a very, very, very low flame if you don't uh, prefer the microwave. Mm. Yes, here's a, here's a question for everyone. Do you, when you cook with chocolate, bake, I suppose, more than anything else, do you still use the double double boiler method, or do you, like me, do everything in the microwave? Audience, <laughs> by all means, leave your comments in the comment stream. Um, Brittany, what do you I, do? I still use, I use the double broiler at work, because they have fancy equipment, and I know, and I use the microwave at home, because... I don't have fancy equipment, and it works in a microwave this time. Uh, but when I have to do my classes, I do it with a double broiler just because it looks better and it's more tips for them on showing how to do it and just explain sure. the microwave option. Sure, it's the traditional traditional method. What about you, Candy? Well, for me, I use both. Since I don't have the double broiler, I place that first in the microwave oven, then salt, water, and ice. Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah, that is that is much more faster, and I think it's more practical than having a double border, which is more expensive. Okay, righty ho, so the chocolate's all melted, Joy? Yes. Now, um, you may notice that my pre-made chocolate sauce is a little darker than this chocolate sauce. Of course, I forgot something else. That would be the powdered baking chocolate which I recommend. So try the sauce. If it's too sweet for you or not chocolatey enough, add your baking chocolate up to um, two tablespoons. It says a quarter of a cup in the um, recipe, but that's a, a typo. Do, do, do you mean cocoa powder? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Awesome. That's exactly the point. Uh, Joy, you, we're, we're getting jealous. Describe the flavors, Joy. Describe the flavors to us. What can you taste in there? Uh, so actually, um, it's the other way around in terms of sweet. Sweet first, bitter on the aftertaste, um, rich, and um, it's got this really lovely smoky flavor from the adobo. So there's this rich, wow. very sweet, slightly sweet chocolate and adobo, and then the very, very rich um, nut paste and sesame. Awesome. Paste. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. We have um, lots of appreciative audience members. Let's have a Let's have a look. If you can bring that up, Joy. Let oh, sure. A, let me take a uh, photo. Uh, back a little bit. That's back so little nice. Little bit. That's it. That's so nice. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Right now, we're going to head on over to Namal in Sri Lanka, who, who I'm sorry, Namal, you, you, you didn't get much of a chance to speak with all these blabbering women on the panel. <laughs> uh, right. Namal's got a surprise for us. Over to you, Namal. He he is going to he's going to entertain us with a song that he wrote himself. So, do I want to read the translation first? Uh, um, yeah, you just say what I'll do is after the show I'll put the uh, lyrics in the event. Okay. This is a random song. This is about uh, mm. the doubt, the hope, and friendship and uh, the hope. Okay, fantastic.
field myself. I guess that was bound to happen, um, coming all the way from Sri Lanka. That was really good. It was very yeah. good, wasn't it? Um, Beautiful voice. That's the second song of his that I've heard, and um, he's, so he writes the songs, um, the music and everything, the lyrics and music himself. So, he has a really nice voice. Yes. He has a voice. Yeah. For those of you who joined us in the last sort of two to three minutes, no, we are not a musical show. We really are a musical <laughs> show. Um, so there we go. Namal is kind of joining us, but we're going to wrap up now. We're waiting for 30, uh, 30, 30, yeah, 30 minutes. Um, so. I'm going to come back to you in a minute. Brittany, yes. what do you think, very quickly, what did you think of that? I thought it was great. I think that Molde Sauce is one that I was always intimidated by because it has such a rich history and there are so many different ways to look after seeing it and really enjoys wrestling with some of the pictures earlier. I think I could tell it. I'm kind of excited. So. Especially John's. So, cool. cool. Maybe can you have a have a spam mole sauce? Yeah, this spam will be. I'll be posting the recipe and then I'll be cooking one day for AZ Entertainment about this about sushi. And by the at the moment we are having a big project right now. Two projects actually. The first time cooking show here in G Plus. It's open. And one is the Live Photo Workers Worldwide, which is a new, a, a year old, I mean, a month old, and we are trying to do our best in this platform because why you can share anything from all over the world what you want to share, even though it's cooking, photography, whatever event you have, this is the platform that we have right now and are making our best about this. We already started anyway. Excellent. Thank you. For those of you who'd like more information on what Candy is doing, um, just head on over to her profile and um, you can learn more about that. And that um, virtual, oh, she's disappeared. Virtual photo walkers, um, go to her profile and you'll see it. Um, right, Namal, thank you so much for singing for us. We, we appreciate that. And now I'm going to go back to Joy. Um, I'm going to let Joy, um, right. Last few words from Joy. Well, um, it can certainly be intimidating, and no two recipes agree on the ingredients, but I think that this one is accessible. Maybe a lot of uh, ingredients, but, um, you know, definitely try to make it at home. It's worth it. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was really good having you um, cooking, cooking for us um, again, Joy. And, My pleasure. Uh, Thank you. Until your first wedding anniversary, I'm going to keep calling you new bride. So, because you know, <laughs> the only bride I know at the moment. So there you go. Righty ho, everybody! Thank you so much um, for for joining us. Um, everybody in the audience, um, there are too many of you for me to, to to go through by name right now because I'll miss someone and I'll upset you. So for everybody who's been commenting all throughout the show, um, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And and um, we shall see you again soon next week. So until then, bye for all, for all of us.